Hi, my name is Linda Oltman and I am the Education Coordinator for the Perkiomen Watershed Conservancy. So today we're going to do a little story time and natural, natural history time for children about three to six, maybe a little bit older. And the topic today is going to be rabbits, the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. So here's a, here's a picture of the guy that we're going to be learning a little bit more about today. And down the bottom there is his footprints that you, if you see tracks like that, you're probably looking at the Eastern Cottontail. So the story we're going to read first is called A Baby Rabbit Story. Busy mother rabbit is building a nest. Twigs, grass, and leaves will make a good home for new baby bunnies. So mother rabbits will build a nest of grasses. Sometimes they will actually take some of the fur, they'll pluck it out of their own body and line their nest with fur as well. Now the rabbits that live around here, the cottontails, do not dig their own barrows. So they might use an old groundhog hole um, as a place to, to shelter in, but when they're making their nest, it's just a very shallow depression. Um, and these can be pretty much anywhere in your garden, out in the middle of your lawn, wherever they decide is a good spot to build one. Soon, four baby bunnies are born. The wiggly babies are pinkish gray and naked. Brr, snuggle bunnies, they keep each other warm. So they are born very tiny, completely naked, and blind, so they are very helpless when they are first born. And normally there's about five of them, although the litter size can vary. Newborn rabbits can't see. The mother rabbit feeds her baby's milk from her body and the bunnies grow quickly. So the mother will feed the rabbits only twice a day. She has very rich milk, so she will nurse her babies, generally um, dawn and dusk, just twice a day. And then other than that, she'll stay away from them to help, you know, keep them hidden and keep attention away from her babies. After three or four days, the bunny's eyes open. The new fur is slick and brown. So now they're starting to look more like actual baby bunnies. So they're growing very quickly. Mom only visits the nest twice a day. She doesn't stay long. Predators might see her. She stays away to keep the baby safe. So that is mom's way of keeping her baby safe. Soon the bunnies begin to explore. Did you hear that? Little bunny's ears perk up and turn to listen all around. So rabbits, of course, have those wonderful large ears. They're kind of cup shaped that really help them to hear very well. And they can actually move their ears around so they can hear in all different directions. Munch, munch, munch. Three week old bunnies eat grass, weeds, fruit, and vegetables. Time for a taste of clover. So only at three weeks old now, they're already beginning to eat plants in the yard. After eating, bunnies groom their fluffy fur. They use their front paws to clean their face and ears. Don't forget to wash your paws. So rabbits actually spend quite a bit of time grooming. Very clean. Boing, boing, look at me. The young rabbits spring straight up in the air. Let's play all day. So the babies are, you know, learning how to uh, use their, their back legs and jump and, you know, that exercise is important in their development. Bye, Mom. At two months old, babies are on their own. They will find mates and have families of their own. So just two months old and they're already completely ready to be on their own. All right, so what we have here is a skeleton. It's actually not a real skeleton. It's a model of a skeleton of a rabbit. 
which it's kind of hard to recognize that it's a rabbit because, you know, obviously the big floppy ears are one of the things that makes a rabbit look like a rabbit. But there's not actually any bone in the rabbit's outer ear. So, you know, this is just showing his bones. So um, the rabbit um, has a backbone, just like we do. So its backbone runs the entire length here. And then it has ribs, just like we do. Uh, the rabbit's back feet, you can see, are much bigger than his front feet. So he's got really, really big back feet and very long back legs. And that allows him to really, you know, generate a really powerful jump. So this rabbit um, can jump about 10 feet in a single hop. So I'm going to show you what 10 feet looks like just to give you an idea. So this little ribbon here is 10 feet and we're just going to kind of pull it out and try to get an idea of how far 10 feet is. So we're still going and we're still going and we're <laughs> still going. Uh oh, I need more arms <laughs> and we're still going. Woo! All right, so this is very far. <laughs> so let's see if I put it over there. Let's see, it's much longer than my table here. So it comes all the way over here. So if the rabbit were all the way here, he could jump all the way over here in a single jump. So obviously that's pretty far, much further than we could jump. Um, the rabbit is um, prey for many animals. So. Unfortunately, most rabbits in the wild don't live to be more than about a year old because there's many other things that like to eat rabbits. So many of their adaptations are geared towards being aware of predators and trying to escape predators. So that one, um, you know, that powerful jump is one way for them to escape. They also, when they're trying to escape, they'll run in a, a zigzag pattern to try to, you know, uh, throw the predator off so they can't follow their scent trail as easily. And sometimes they'll just freeze in place and try to hide and hope that they're not seen. So the other thing I wanted to point out with the rabbit is his very sharp front teeth here. These are called the rabbit's incisors and they continue to grow his entire life and they do get worn down as the rabbit uses them. Now those those front incisors act kind of like a pair of scissors, right? And the rabbit eats a lot of vegetation. So it kind of uses it in a, like a snipping motion to snip off pieces of vegetation. And then with its teeth, its small teeth that are back here in its cheek, it actually grinds up the vegetation before swallowing it. So. The rabbit will eat lots of um, plant material, only plant material really, um, lots of fresh greens, but in the winter it will have to switch its diet and start to eat more woody stuff because the greens aren't available, so it might eat the bark off of trees or twigs, so having those sharp incisors are really helpful. Obviously it has the big ears to help it hear well so it can be alert for prey. It also has very large eyes and its eyes are set way back on its head so that it can really see pretty much all the way around it. So it can really keep an eye out for danger. So this animal is kind of built for being aware of danger and, and being able to escape. So the next thing we're gonna look at over here is a couple furs from some Eastern cottontail rabbits. So you can see that this one is more brown in color and this one is more gray in color. The, uh, the coat color can vary in this rabbit, but in general, the summer coat, which this one is a summer coat, is going to be shorter and it tends to be more brown or reddish brown. So you can see that this coat here is pretty short 
but then in the winter, it's going to grow a much thicker, longer fur coat, and it's going to have a lot of what we call under fur. So that really soft, fluffy under fur there is going to help to keep the rabbit warm in the winter. And it's darker kind of grayish color helps him blend in a little bit better in the winter time. But the rabbit will still need to find shelter in uh, brushy areas or possibly take shelter in an abandoned woodchuck burrow in order to stay warm in the winter. Okay, so we're gonna finish up today with a book called Rabbits and Raindrops. Mother Rabbit sits by her nest under a hedge at the end edge of the green lawn. So we here we have her mother and one, two, three, four, five little babies or kits. Mm -hmm. Her five babies are ready to climb out of the nest for the first time. Mother Rabbit hops out into the bright sunlight onto the green grass. There's the little babies watching her. One after another, the five baby rabbits hop out onto the lawn. They nibble clover, blossoms, and leaves. They meet grasshoppers, spiders, and bees. All of a sudden, the sky turns dark and big, heavy raindrops begin to fall. A rabbit's fur is not waterproof. Baby rabbits can become soaked and catch cold. So Mother Rabbit hurries her babies back under the hedge. From the dry shelter, five baby rabbits watch the rain pouring down. So cute with their little cottontails. <laughs> <laughs> a butterfly flutters in under the hedge and rests on a dry leaf. Soon others come inside out of the rain. So we have a hummingbird trying to get out of the rain too. Out in the shower, honeybees buzz by, flying between raindrops to stay dry. Suddenly the shower ends and the last few raindrops splatter down. Got a nice little turtle here. Mm -hmm. All together, the rabbits hop out onto the lawn to taste the wet grass and play rabbit tag in the sun. The end. <laughs> so thank you for watching this video today. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned more about our friends, the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. Thanks. <laughs>